Whenever I stream the FNAF games over on my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash zingttv, I'm often asked questions about my opinions on different things in the franchise. What is the scariest FNAF game, to which I answer four, of course. What is the easiest FNAF game, to which I answer the first one. However, there's one question similar to these that I have never been able to definitively answer. What is my favorite FNAF animatronic? Considering there are more animatronics in all of these games than Genshin Impact players that don't go outside... I actually scratch that, there's not that many. Whatever. The point is there's a lot, which makes it hard to choose just one, especially since a lot of them are shrouded in mystery just like everything else in this series. It's also difficult to figure out what qualities make for a good animatronic and what qualities make for a not so good one. Despite all of this, I've done a lot of thinking recently and I'm pretty sure I've finally got my answer. This is why Circus Baby is my favorite animatronic in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. The reason most of the animatronics don't really stand out to me is because they barely have any personality that is readily apparent. The few traits and animatronics from the earlier games that I can even think of off the top of my head is like how Chica likes to eat and be in the kitchen, or how Springtrap is allured by the sounds of children, and since Sister Location is the first game in the series to have proper voice acting other than Phone Guy. Blah blah blah. Now that might sound bad, I know. But there's really nothing to worry about. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night. <laughs> a bit quirky? <laughs> This is the first time we get to hear our tormentors and how they actually think and feel. That wouldn't be super interesting on its own, but it changes the narrative of this game a lot as a matter of fact. The best example of this is none other than Circus Baby. Baby is technically the first animatronic in the entire franchise that talks to us if you don't count hand unit. Exotic butters. And it really catches the player off guard and leaves them unsettled. Her voice is weirdly calm and forward, and her odd word choices tell us that there's definitely more to her than we think. Something that I've seen a lot of people complain about is how little we actually see of Baby throughout the events of Sister Location. Honestly, I think that works to her benefit. Since Baby's betrayal after helping us the entire game is supposed to be the big twist, having her be hidden from us adds to that slight feeling of distrust that we feel for her. This is the first time in the franchise that an animatronic is willingly helping us while also being almost completely hidden from us, and there's a reason for that. Circus Baby's backstory is one of the most tragic in the entire series, which makes her all the more interesting and memorable. We really don't know a whole lot about the animatronics in the previous games. It's either hinted that they're possessed by children or alive in some other way. However, with Baby, her backstory is revealed to us pretty directly over the course of Sister Location. Circus Baby is possessed by Elizabeth Afton, otherwise known as the first of William Afton's dead children. After William opened Circus Baby's Pizza World, Elizabeth always asked him if she could go see Baby, to which he always answered no. Now, what William did differently with the new animatronics for this establishment as opposed to the ones from the old locations is he added built-in mechanisms specifically designed to lure in and kill children. Since William knew that Baby would recognize his daughter as a child, she would most likely die if she went anywhere near Baby. He kept her safe as best he could, but it wasn't enough. One day, when William was preoccupied, Elizabeth went to Baby. For the first time, Circus Baby dispensed ice cream to draw Elizabeth closer before scooping out her insides and killing her instantly. William eventually found out about this and became even more mentally unstable because of it. Despite his psychopathic and murderous tendencies, he still cared deeply about his three children and tried to do everything he could to protect them. But as we would soon find out, all three of them would die to his creations. Of course, Elizabeth dying happens before the events of Sister Location. During the game, we play as Michael Afton, her older brother. He is going down into the underground bunker known as Circus Baby's Entertainment and Rental. Michael is looking for his father since he has been missing for quite a while now. He decided to look here since it's the only location he knows of that his father still has open. 
Once Michael is down there, the facility sees him as a maintenance repair worker. He goes along with it because at this point he'd do anything to find his father. He also desperately wants to ask him how his sister Elizabeth passed away because he was never told. Alright, that's enough backstory. Let's talk about how our relationship with Circus Baby progresses during Sister Location. The first time Baby speaks to us is on night 2 when Hand Unit turns the power off. She tells us that she doesn't recognize us and that she doesn't know why we are here, but tells us how to survive anyway. This strengthens the theory that even though Elizabeth is the one really talking to us, she fully thinks she is Baby and no longer her human self. Keep in mind that the entire time she talks to us that she still hasn't shown herself to us yet. She tells us how to survive the Biddy Babs and how to go through the Ballora Gallery which goes against what Hand Unit tells us. Again, this is extremely jarring considering we don't really know who we can trust just yet, and the fact that an animatronic is helping us out of nowhere doesn't really help either. This is what makes Circus Baby so memorable, and that accompanied by the fantastic performance by Heather Masters makes this animatronic feel more lifelike than any other one we've seen in this franchise so far. We start to meet the other animatronics on this night as well, but none of them are nearly as interesting as Circus Baby. Ballora is pretty creepy to see in the darkness, but she doesn't even talk until later in the night, and even then what she says is super simple and doesn't tell us much about her character at all. Funtime Freddy is even presumed to have preset voice lines, and isn't able to speak freely. While the performance from Kellen Goff is stellar as always, it doesn't really tell us a whole lot about Funtime Freddy's character. Baby is the only one that really speaks to us and knows what is going on, which hints at her having a more complex personality than the others. It's hard to really compare any of the other animatronics in the series to her for that reason. At first I was trying to figure out whether I enjoyed Circus Baby or Springtrap more and I decided to go with Baby. Springtrap is a great antagonist for the series because he's mysterious, ruthless, and undeniably creepy, but where I think Baby wins over him for me personally is how we actually know what motives Baby has. Springtrap just killed kids because he felt like it, while Circus Baby killed to free herself and her friends from their terrible prison. There's just more depth to Baby's character that I think is more interesting to try and figure out. On night 3, if you go against what Hand Unit tells you and go to Circus Baby in her gallery, she tells you in detail how she killed Elizabeth Afton. This is probably my favorite part of Sis Location lore-wise. Before this, we aren't really given the story of significant events in the FNAF franchise this directly. On top of that, never before are we really told by any of the animatronics themselves what their backstory is, which makes Circus Baby's dialogue all the more unique. The way she describes the incident makes it seem like at one point she was genuinely happy to be able to entertain children, but all of that was taken away from her as soon as she scooped Elizabeth. While listening to Baby's story, the player starts to feel genuinely sorry for this poor animatronic. This is a foreign concept until now, but it seems like Baby really did care about making others happy. It wasn't her fault that she was programmed to destroy the one she cared about. Hearing Baby open up to the player like this strengthens our relationship with her even more. We have no reason not to trust her since she has been protecting us, and now we have more information about her straight from the horse's mouth. However, all of that completely changes on the next night, which makes for some of the best juxtaposition in a narrative that I've ever seen. Night 4 has us trapped inside a springlock suit, which is something we've heard about happening to people in this series before, but never got to experience firsthand. We soon learn that it was Baby who put us here, which is quite odd to hear considering how nice she has been to us the entire time we've known her. I see this night as foreshadowing for the true final twist that we see later on. This night reminds us that Baby is not who she may seem, and shows us that she may be mentally unstable and have other sinister motives. She goes on to explain that we are in the scooping room, and shows us that this is the place where animatronics get their insides forcefully ripped out of them for repair. She also uses that analogy of a pint of ice cream being scooped which is very on brand for her character. The entire time I listen to when Baby talks to me, it almost feels like she's talking down to me. She uses an easy to understand manner of speech, 
analogies, and a calm, whispery voice when explaining things. It almost feels like she thinks I'm a small child that doesn't have a very deep understanding of how things work. Not only does this make sense for her true purpose, but it makes her extremely effective as a villain. Luring you into a false sense of security before ripping that away from you, metaphorically and literally. Anyways, after finishing the painstakingly tedious task that is night 4, we move on to the final night. If you haven't noticed, we literally haven't ever physically seen Circus Baby the entire game yet, aside from pictures of her on a few posters. As we make our way into the bunker for the final time, instead of checking on Ballora and Funtime Foxy, they are replaced by the two technicians who sent Ballora to be scooped the previous night. They are each hanging dead from nooses. It is implied that the animatronics, including Circus Baby, killed them and framed their suicide so their true plan could come to fruition. When we get to parts in service on night 5, we finally get to see her. This is one of the last times Baby talks to us and it's while she is deactivated and lifelessly looming over us. Technically we could have gone through this entire game without ever seeing Baby and it wouldn't make that much of a difference narratively. However, this short moment with her makes the twist ending much more impactful in my opinion. Seeing how helpless Baby truly is compared to her creator makes her tragic backstory sting a little more. Even though she has dropped hints that she is not to be trusted, despite being locked away down here, she still tries to help and protect us. She also tries to make us feel like we are not alone, even though that is how she has felt her entire existence. Now, after all we've been through, we have to be the ones that press the button and send her to the scooping room. It's honestly really heartbreaking having to send our only friend in the entire franchise so far to be destroyed. Before we get to the ending, I want to talk about Circus Baby's appearance. Now I won't come out and say that she has a revolutionary design or anything, but considering this is one of the first animatronics in the series that has this new futuristic style while also being more humanoid, I'd say her model is fantastic. It's super recognizable and her innocent smile and childlike features are such great nods to her backstory and hidden motives. She is one of my favorite designs in the series because she's sort of the first of the animatronics that doesn't mimic the anthropomorphic animal look of the Chuck E. Cheese robots like the original animatronics. After we send Baby to the scooping room, she guides us and tells us to go there as well. This is where the twist she's been formulating the entire game comes to fruition. Circus Baby is a fantastic villain because even though she's extremely cunning, she's also hopelessly flawed. She explains that the other animatronics including her have all been scooped and they need a human exterior in order to leave their underground prison for good. Even though she is betraying us outright, she still sounds reluctant to hurt us all the way until the end. Her voice sounds like she desperately wants empathy from us. Despite that, she goes ahead and scoops us anyway. This makes me think deep down that she knows who she's truly murdering, but goes through with it anyway. The game then shows our corpse in the mirror, now with purple eyes. It's such a poetic conclusion to the tragic relationship between us and Baby. Elizabeth thought Baby was her friend, but she turned out to be her killer. We thought Baby was our friend, but she turned out to be our killer. I also want to briefly talk about Baby during the fake ending if you choose to go that route. If you make it into the secret private room, you are forced to survive until 6am while defending yourself against Ennard in a familiar FNAF setting. Throughout this part of the game, Baby can be heard in the background begging us to let her in and that she thought we were her friend. She becomes so desperate that she eventually reveals to us her plan that she and the other animatronics need our corpse to escape. She was also confused and thought that the reason we came down here was to see someone she refers to as HER again. At 4am, Baby's voice gets replaced by Elizabeth's which confirms that her soul is possessing Baby. Even after outsmarting her, Baby still tries to manipulate us emotionally to try and get what she wants. A truly despicable character that is written so well. Circus Baby's entire existence is an absolute tragedy. She lived a constantly tortured existence from the start, and she's the first animatronic where we actually see their personality firsthand. 
Baby has intrigued me ever since this location first came out, and I believe she is one of the most well-written characters this franchise has to offer. She has a tragic backstory, wonderfully weird characteristics, an evil mindset, and a beautiful appearance. All of this is why Circus Baby is my favorite animatronic in the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. Thanks for watching.